All right, what up, people? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Ah, uh, so just to explain my day and exactly why it's taken me so long to go live with this. Uh, essentially, uh, I set up the stream. Then Claw needed a favor, needed me to jump on his show, which I, I'm glad I did. It was a, a really enjoyable show. Big, big shout out to to Claude um, and Kenny Ken as well, who was on the show with us and needed me to jump on, um, helped a mate out. Subsequently, all of my shit got pushed back to the <laughs> to the end of the day, so apologies for that. Um, but big up anyone who does happen to join me live. I can't imagine very pe many people will. I haven't put my usual tags and stuff that gets people on, uh, but we're just going to do a very, very quick show today. A little 10-minute show tonight. So please do stick a like on this video and we'll go from there. <clears throat> but apologies. If you watch me on Claw's show, you know where I was. Um, and it doesn't mean that I've stopped recording. Uh, it just means that I'm going to be doing four, four shows in the next 24 hours for you. This one, a double chopping block. A Chib Knows Best video series, which I'm still editing after the show. And the preview for the Sheffield United game. So all four will, will hit you within the next 24 hours. Not to mention, I'm also editing together a special Bad Boys review. Because uh, anyone who doesn't know, on Chig Flicks, which is my movie channel, go subscribe to that. Um, Bad Boys 1 is my favorite film. I know it's one that always surprises a lot of people because it's a very flawed film. Um, but for Bad Boys 3 to recently drop, I thought I would do a very special review for that. Um, so, yeah, your boy's working. really. But, you know, when your boy, when, especially when another friend of yours asks you to do him a favor, jump on his show, what could you do? Say no. But it's really good. I enjoyed the show with Claude. Shout out to Claude. Um, and let's get on with this show now. And that is Guna Eagle Eye, baby. You're through to Eagle Eye, the transfer rumor show where I talk to you about transfer rumors and rumors surrounding the Arsenal. Let's, without further ado, talk about Kazawa. He is the left back um, who's currently with PSG. Um, decent ish player. Um, I, I see people going off the different extremes um, in Arsenal Twitter because it's Arsenal Twitter. Some people think he's absolutely useless and that Kalasanak is better. That is false. Um, then there are some people who believe he's not that good, um, and that is also false. Um, big up to you, uh, Chadwick Motfit. I appreciate that, my bro. Thank you, my guy. I'll, I'll get Sonny on at some point. Sonny I've got to brace myself for because he's like a tornado. But at some point, I will get Sonny on. But thank you, my bro. Appreciate the donation. Thank you. And Alexander Gomez, my ride or die. Thought you were a bit reserved on pos uh, on closed podcast. Bro, it's late. <laughs> Plus, in my head, I was just thinking, shit, I have so many things to do on my on show. I have so many things to do. Uh, but you needed my help, so I had to come through. Uh, but yeah, doesn't mean that you guys are going to suffer. It just means instead of all four shows tonight, you're going to get them staggered over the next 24 hours. Uh, but thank you, uh, Gomez. Miss London, time to move back home now, I think. Well, come back. It's going to be expensive, though. Brace yourself for that tornado. All right. Uh, let's, let's go. Let's do this. Um, let's talk about Eagle Eye, Transfer Rumor Show, Kazawa. Uh, so he's not as bad as people are making out. Um, from my perspective, he's a decent player. Um, he's an actual left back. And to be honest with you, I'm at the point now where anything that stops uh, Saka playing as a left back, I'm all for. I think we're wasting the kid out there, personally. Um, I like because I, I like Saka as a left wing back, but as a left back, I just don't think it works. Um, and I think any any kind of differences you can make in that back line will help. Supposedly, according to David Ornstein, just to kind of woe back a little bit. Um, he broke around this afternoon that Arsenal are in advanced talks with Kazawa. Um, the belief was that PSG was set to lose him at the end of the season for nothing. 
He's not signed a new contract. He's in the last six months of his contract. Um, so Arsenal kind of saw that as an opportunity to say, all right, well, the way the story read was that initially we're getting him on as a, as a loan and then we'll sign him at the end of the season. Uh, actually, I think that's sensible uh, if that's the case. Because what you can then do is say to your, is say to say Kalasnak, all right, here, here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring on a left back. You are now playing for your Arsenal career. So because obviously Kieran is going to be up and running come next season. We've just spent 25 million on him. You best believe we're playing him. There's only one spot left. We're not committing to signing Kazawa on a permanent, but what we're going to do is that we're going to get him on loan. From PSG's point of view, it makes sense. If they can get anything for him, for Kazawa, why wouldn't they? Even though as a loan fee, why wouldn't they? Um, and then from our point of view, we don't need to commit to a player that we're not sure long-term will be any good. He's 27 years old. From what I've seen, he's serviceable. He's decent. He's a left-back. Um, defensively suspect, but uh, very, very good going forward. Very, very good going forward. Um, so he's basically another Kalasnak. Um, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it because I think the risk is minimal. For a loan fee where we're not committing past you know, past this year. Why wouldn't you take that risk? So that's what I've at least initially heard. I know some people have said that, you know, we're going to be buying him flat out. But I think if you could get him on a loan deal and then not commit to him until he's actually proven himself, to me, logically, that's the smart choice. That's the option you want to go for. So, yeah. Um, big up to everyone that is watching. I know, I know I'm going on late and... I know lots of people, I appreciate anyone watching at this point. So thank you. I know the numbers aren't normally where they normally are, but thank you. Anything you could do, please do stick a like on this video. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. I'm dropping four videos on this channel in the next 24 hours. This is the first of them. So keep an eye out. Um, all right. I think for me with Kazawa, I think it will turn out to be a decent signing. But then, obviously, there is a question of, all right, you've improved the left-back, but what about the centre-back situation? Can you improve the centre-back situation? Well, I would. I would look towards improving the centre-back situation, and I think Arsenal agree. Arsenal supposedly are, I don't know about advanced talks, but they're in talks with, and I'm going to butcher his name, so I'm going to try and say it as carefully as humanly possible, Okay, uh, Gattafi uh, centre back, Dejean Dokoranam. Dokoranam. Um, he is the 20 year old uh, centre back that plays for Gustafi. Um, we were linked with him in the summer, um, played very well last season. Um, and actually, this season, people say he's even better. Uh, <laughs> he's got into the team of the year last year uh, for La Liga. As a, as a centre-back, I believe. I believe. I didn't read that part of the story properly. I believe that's the case. But what I think I do know is that he's kicked on and he's gotten even better. Um, I know that at the time that this story was reported, there were some people that thought that he had a bit of a Mustafi in him. So I was a little bit worried about that. But uh, actually, it looks like he's progressing. Um, he's getting better and better with age. He's 28 years old. From our point of view, I think a pretty ideal age if you know, you're going to have someone that's going to come into the team and hit the ground running. Plus, also, you've got to think about, all right, I'm bringing in a defender. It has to be someone that's going to play with Saliba. I, I mean, let's be honest. So I think if you can bring in someone like this, who he's not very tall. He's like, I think he's 5'11", but Saliba is 6'3". So that, that could potentially be a good compliment. They're both ball-playing centre-backs. Let's see what happens, but we need something. Um, and I quite like this. I prefer this move to John John Stones. I know a lot of people were asking me to comment about that yesterday. Um, I had a few questions about that on Claude's show. Um, for me, with John Stones, 
just because he's better doesn't be doesn't mean I want it. It's like a punch on the arm is better than a punch in the face. Doesn't mean I want a punch on the arm, you know. So uh, he's still a, a, a calamitous defender to me, less so than Mustafi, less so than Luis, but he's still a calamitous defender, you know. And we're not some sort of broken down elderly home. I'm sorry. I know John Stones is only 25 for someone says something. I'm talking about also broken down defenders or defenders that want to rehab their form or their ability at Arsenal. Like we're turning into Bolton 2006. And yeah, people got offended by that. Yeah, Bolton, Bolton 2006 was a bad man team. But considering Bolton started off as a relegation team and they stepped up to what? A top eight team. That was a good trajectory for them. We don't want to be Bolton 2006. Don't get me wrong. One of my favourite players of all time was a Bolton player, and that's JJ Okocha. But uh, let's be real here. Quite honestly, and I'm, and I'm, I'm probably lying a little bit because JJ Okocha was my favourite ever player. If this was 2020 and JJ Okocha was 31 and we signed him, I'd be disappointed for like two seconds. But I'd be disappointed. Should be aiming for higher. Should be aiming for much, much higher. Now, I, I hear what other people are saying in the chat about Kula Bali, of course. I mean, of course. But it seems like the, the board are not going to sanction a deal like that. You know, they, they'd prefer to wait till the summer to sanction a deal like that. So, in, in my view, personally, um, let's see how good this guy can be. It seems to be everywhere. Literally everywhere I search about transfer rumours, they are really talking about this Dijon guy. He's set to be cost around twenty-two million, which for Arsenal is not a crazy amount of money. Particularly if you do go on to sell Mustafi. Although I heard Arteta talking up Mustafi today, so I'm a little bit worried about that. But if you do go on to make sales, then you could raise that twenty-two million, no problem. Um, apparently, we uh, Monaco. Also have registered their interest in this Dijon guy. Um, and um, but they made a bid of 12.8 million, which was of course rejected. Uh, so let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Uh, I don't really want to talk about the story because I know it's nonsense. Um, I'll talk about it anyway. James Madison apparently is on Arsenal's radar. Um, Basically, Arteta has said he's liked a couple of players. John Stones was one. James Madison was another. People have lost their mind about James Madison. Uh, let me tell you straight up right now, we have absolutely no chance of James Madison. Uh, apparently, he's, they're talking about a region of £90 million. I mean, if you have £90 million to spend on the number 10, go and get Kai Havertz, who, by the way, is apparently being lined up by Liverpool. For 125 million pounds, so maybe Ban goes that dream. Uh, but yeah, supposedly we are all over the idea of James Madison. Listen, for me, and I've just had this discussion with Kenny, Ken, and Claude, an excellent technical player, Got lots of class. Um, and unfortunately for Leicester, I don't think he's destined to stay there very long. I've actually always thought he'd end up at Man United, I still think that will happen. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> in my view, uh, I don't think, I don't see us, uh, going for, um, um, for, uh, James Madison, but it's a nice little pipe dream. Uh, I don't know if I really want to talk about this, but I will anyway. Supposedly Arsenal are interested in Bruno Gamirez. You may have heard of this name. Because supposedly, this time yesterday, Spurs were on the verge of signing him. Apparently, Arsenal come in the 11th hour, allegedly. Um, and Edu, obviously being South American, and trying to work this deal for Arsenal. Um, the feeling is that the agent of Bruno Gamirez is using Arsenal in order to get a better deal from Tottenham. Because 
supposedly Gamirez's first choice is Spurs, which is understandable because Spurs are in the Champions League and we ain't. <clears throat> so um, I would say, in my opinion, guys, hold your thoughts on that one. He is obviously a very, very good player. He's been linked with lots of clubs as well. But Spurs were thought to be <clears throat> pole position to secure his signing. Suddenly in the 11th hour, Edu's come and is, I guess, trying to prove his worth because at the moment, are you seeing much worth out of Edu? I, I ain't really seen that much. Martinelli, okay, maybe. You could argue maybe that was his signing. Maybe. But is there anything else? So I think with Edu, he kind of needs to step it up. This is his time to shine. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. But 26 million, I, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced Arsenal will, will sanction it. Good player, though, mid midfielder. Technically very good. So let's see what happens. Now I'm going to talk about one more story before I head up out of here. Thank you so much once again to everybody watching. I know... I kept you guys on a delay. Um, but yes, bear with me. <laughs> I guess I'll talk about the story. Shall I talk about the story? Let me talk about the story. So uh, for those of you, for those three or four people that actually wanted uh, Kessie from AC Milan, you'll be happy to know AC Milan have set an asking price. For Kessie, do you want to know what that asking price is? Anyone? 25 million euros, which translates to 21.3 million pounds for Frank Kessie. No, thank you. Keep him. It's all right. He's clumsy. He's oafish. No, thank you. We need a DM. Not that bad. <laughs> so that's just my opinion on that one. You guys, again, let me know what you think. Uh, there's going to be no chance of O2 today, brother. It's just past midnight. I actually fell asleep about 15 minutes ago on the sofa trying to get this show up. Uh, but you're gonna, I'm gonna have you're gonna have lots of show. You're gonna have lots of shows from me. So one thing you would have missed, and I'll say this again as I start to wrap it up. Thank you everybody for watching. Please do stick a like on this video. I'm gonna be back three more times over the next 24 hours. The Arsenal versus Sheffield United preview. So we can do a long Q&A session after that if you like. Uh, chopping block, double chopping block. So that's going to be an extra long one. And then a Chig Knows Best video series, which will be an edited video that I'm going to be putting together. All of which I'm going to drop in the next 24 hours. Not to mention, if you're a Chig Flicks fan, you're going to get a special Bad Boys review. I'll be chopped up, edited, ready to show you guys uh, for uh, tomorrow when I see it with my boy. So I am out of here now. In the meantime, please do stick a like on this video. Please hit that subscribe button. I've not put all the socials in the description yet, but I will. Do follow me on Instagram at Guna Eagle Eye. That's why I put it in the... Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. And I agree with you, Ben. Um, <laughs> I put it in the name description. So please, Guna Eagle Eye on Insta. I appreciate the follow. Numbers are slowly growing on there. So yeah, thank you. All right. I'm out of here. Take care. Uh, Don Juan, only you would think that. Peace.